he was going to be seeing like you know bone marrow being extracted and having a needle yeah. injected so, into my penis when they did that part and uh, he was he was not signed up for that so, so was I, I was you know I, I was explaining to you a little bit about you know my reservation about uh, getting stem cells from our own body so first of all you know at our age or even when you're a teenager or, or even when you're nine years old, your stem cells is not nearly as potent as a young, you know, young stem cells. It's got senescence going on. It's got, you know, you've gone through the environmental changes with whatever toxins that's in the environment. You know, all kinds of just living produces this oxidative stress and that causes your cells to senesce. So your stem cells senesce with you. Uh, DNAs are changing and all that stuff. But not just that, not only the cells are not as potent, but you're also, causing all these injuries and damage. So you are actually taking out your own stem cells. So you're taking your stem cells out of their dormancy, right? They are, instead of, you know, sitting your body cocooned and, and, and preserved, all of a sudden you woke them up and you put them to work. And once they're put to work, there's a finite lifespan. So they're gonna die, you know, you know in about a few months, three months. Um, so, so which means when you take them out and put it back your body, so you woke them up and put it back your body, temporarily you may be better, but guess what? You just reduced your own stem cell supply. Um, and also to pay attention, you know, the, the one thing that people, you know, are not thinking about is when you do a trauma like that, when you drill into your bone, when you do a liposuction, you just created pretty big trauma to your body. And, and when you try to put the cells back in your body to heal your body, guess what the cells are attracted to? they're really attracted to injury and inflammation. So if you have other areas in your body you're trying to heal, but the first thing the cells know is that I am gonna heal that acute injury. That's a severe injury into the bones and or into the fat tissue, let's heal that. So that's the first place they will go. Um, so in a way you're reducing some of the effectiveness of trying to heal whatever you're trying to, you know, to help. Um, so there, there are all these limitations that I think it's, it's not talked about enough. Cool. Wow. That's, that's really interesting information. Yeah. And then the other thing, and I'm sure we'll talk about this when we do the official podcast, but many people travel out of the country so that the FDA doesn't disallow you from um, culturing the stem cells and multiplying them, right? But I think I read in your... No, PDF, FDA does not allow you to do it unless you do it um, uh, when you're conducting a clinical study. So you can't just do that and give it to people. It has to be under a clinical study. So that takes its own procedure and you know there's a cost involved in it um, so that's what's making it a little more difficult and you were saying in the PDF that you sent me that um, it's uh, of your opinion or maybe there's facts to support this but when even say I go to you know um, Panama right and I have stem cell therapy and they culture them and create millions and millions and millions because they multiply them you were saying that they get sort of diluted and they're they have less potentiality or they're weaker yeah in number so, when they're when they're cultured yeah like so that. so i i tell people um okay so it may sound nice you know instead of giving you 10 million cells i'm giving you 100 million isn't that wonderful but guess what the 10 millions do when i put in a human body which is the best incubator there is comparing to any incubator that you can find that you can design as a human, right? So we are the perfect incubator. If I put 10 million cells in me, they're gonna grow to a million, a billion, way more than that because they have about 40, 50, or even a little bit more generations to expand um, in your body. So, so it's a little silly and to me it's a little gimmicky to try to grow them outside the body. Um, in an artificial environment when you can just put in the human body and let the cells do their own growth and get to whatever they need to become rather than artificially of you not even giving them the full complement of nutrition and the, the full signals and you're just putting them in an incubator. So to me it doesn't make sense and also when cells expand um, a lot of times if you're not giving them the right, the right uh, formula um, they often divide into stem cells often divide into a daughter cell and a stem cell. So a daughter cell is fully further differentiated, which means if you have 10 cells and each time they divide, they divide into a daughter cell and a stem cell and daughter cell and a stem cell, you're preserving a stem cell population. But guess what? You've got all these daughter cells that are more differentiated, which means they have other surface receptors that are expressed that can potentially cause immune rejection. Uh, because these receptors are expressed outside of the body. If you put it in the body, 
there's a way for the cells to talk with your body and actually there's less potential for rejection it's very interesting cells do adapt to the new host so but when you're just expanding it outside they don't care they don't know what to adapt to so so when you are doing that and also when you if you are not being careful at the edges of the the, the plates when you when you put the cells in they could easily differentiate more you know you've got to give the cells enough space to grow you know the edges are a problem do we have edges in the human body we don't so, <laughs> so there's a reason that it's safer and better to put in the body and let the cells do their magic wow cool i can't wait to do the interview i have so many questions <laughs> oh my god we have work to do but uh, anyway yeah. um that's that's what we're doing here today. So uh, Dr. Joy Kong, uh, I just tagged her and her um, establishment here in an Instagram story. So for those of you watching now on Instagram, you can go back in the feed and follow her and what she does and you can get the podcast yeah. later. But uh, Kong, yeah, right. there it is right there. <laughs> uh, but we're ready to roll. Awesome. Ready to do yes. this? Okay. Yes.